Hello, it's got a ukulele.com on a very, very hot day in the UK. Um, first for this brand, I had a look recently at the various reviews I've done over the last few years. There's hundreds of them. Um, and I featured instruments from all around the world, USA and the UK, obviously, obviously China. But, you know, Vietnam, Philippines, Germany, um, Nicaragua, places like that. They're from all over, really. But one place I'd never been to for a review is Italy. Uh until today uh, and this time we are looking at this instrument made by Antica Ukuleleria um, my pronunciation of the Italian is terrible made by uh, a luthier in Italy called Marco Todeschini Marco again I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly I'm, I'm a Brit you know we're terrible with languages uh, Antica Ukuleleria um, he is from Verona. He was trained in building stringed instruments in Milan um, in the traditional style. Uh, and I think he's the only full-time professional luthier in Italy that's making solely ukuleles. Um, and this is the one he sent me to take a look at. Um, it's a tenor and it's called the Moderno. It's part of a range of acoustic instruments that he makes, but this is the Moderno. Uh, about that name, Antica means ancient and old in Italian, and that's a nod back to his traditional building style, uh, which is how he was trained. And the word ukulele ria is, um, is a non-word, but it uses that Italian suffix ria, ria, in the same way as pizzeria, and it means a place where, thing, where the thing is made. So a pizzeria is a place where they make pizzas, and a ukulele rear is a place where they make ukuleles. I quite like that. Um, so there we are, the Moderno tenor scale instrument. Incredibly striking to look at. Double bow, but with a really nice sort of narrow, almost sharp upper upper shoulder and a swoopy uh, bass. I think it's absolutely beautiful. That top is made of all solid uh, Italian red spruce, and not just any red spruce. It's come from a forest where Stradivari, Antonio Stradivari, got his woods for making his violins. It's very slow growing wood, which means a very tight grain pattern because the rings are very narrow on the, on the tree. And it is absolutely beautiful. A couple of pieces are on the top, very nice and pale. The back and sides are made of maple that have come from the Balkans, which have got a really nice sort of shimmer and freckle to them. But as you'll see, it's all about this shape. I mean, we've got an arch back, but it, it's arched this way as well as this way. So it gives you this sort of wave look on the back. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and a bit of dark um, vulcanized fiber inlay down there. So a very pale ukulele, very pretty woods. Um, and it's all about the decoration though on this one. So we've got these alcohol dye stained uh, flamed maple around the sound hole, around the top binding, which is also edged in black, and on this optional cutaway, which is, is stunning. Now the blue is not for me, but he does it in a range of colors. I'd go for the deep red myself. Some of you will like the blue. You pick your color based on your football team. So you can see the Moderno. So this is the modern take on a traditional instrument. So he makes builds in the traditional style, but this is certainly a modern look. And I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, the bridge is a slotted style. It's got a sort of lower base made of kaya or mahogany, but it's topped with something called Blackwood Tech, which looks like ebony, but it's actually a chemically treated pine uh, that turns it very dark, very black, and very, very hard. So great for making bridges and fingerboards but it's also very eco-friendly because pine grows everywhere ebony doesn't ebony is in short supply uh, it's fitted with a bone compensated saddle really neat looking inside very tidy build inside interestingly and i suspect because of the curve on this back that the rear linings are not notched but the top ones are the bracing looks a bit chunky uh, and a bit heavy but i think again that's because of this exaggerated curve on the back perhaps I'm, I'm not entirely sure but it's also a very thin instrument so for a tenor it's pretty diminutive um but i like that the neck is made of kaya uh, which is kaya mahogany it's not really a mahogany but it's very very similar light and very strong it's actually made of three pieces we've got a joint down here at the very s slight heel and a, a well hidden joint up here uh, it's also a very nice flat profile which I'm pleased about because the nut width is only 35 mil and normally I'd want those a little bit wider. Um, it's topped with more of the Blackwood tech and I love the way it extends and tapers off beyond 
the nut up there, which is made of corian. Um, that's really, really nice. We've got 18 nickel silver frets in total, 14 to the body. They're really thin. Uh, position markers at 5, 7, 10, and 12. They're repeated on the side. They're dressed really, really well. It's a really comfortable neck. Up to the headstock, nice traditional, uh, traditional, different looking shape. Really thin. This is the logo of the company. Uh, I really like that. And the tuners are made by De Young. They're indistinguishable from Grover's open gears. And he's fitted it with a Quiller sugar strings. In standard spec, this tenor comes at 900 euros, which is a lot of money, but not too bad for a handmade tenor instrument. Um, but with the cutaway, that pushes it up to 1100 euros, so it's getting a bit more expensive still. But you know, handmade in Europe, not China, uh, what you expect. It's really light, it's really well made. Oh, the finish, by the way, that's a satin uh, nitrocellulose. Um, nitro finish and it's really tactile it makes the whole thing feel wonderful uh, it looks great it feels great it's light one th the sound is what it's all about it's got a great character to the tone but one thing I'd say whilst it's got volume it doesn't really have huge amounts of sustain and it kind of doesn't sound like a tenor it sounds like a smaller bodied ukulele which I suppose it is so it's got a kind of more staccato that you get with a, a concert but with this tenor scale that's not a bad thing it's just not what I was expecting. It's also incredibly bright because of these, particularly because of this spruce top. Um, not a lot of sustain. Good volume though. And a really sort of chiming bell tone. I really like it. Yeah, just not what I was expecting from a tenor. Um, it, it's really clear. I think I'd probably put fluorocarbon strings on it myself. That's really nice. It gets a really good score. It's up there in the giddy heights of the nines on God of Ukulele, and why not? Um, this is extremely well made, extremely different, a real head turner. Um, I love the sound of it. I love a lot about it. It's it's really nice. The Antico Ukulele Ria Moderno Tenor, made by Marco Todeschini in Verona, Italy, gets that highly recommended. I mean, look at it. <laughs> just Just look at it. Absolutely wonderful. Really pleased with this one, Marco. Thanks very much. I will be back next week, and good luck to England and Sweden this afternoon in the in the World Cup. I'm being sort of neutral there, but obviously I want England to win because I'm a Brit. See you soon. <laughs>